lots of hatred, lots of secrets, lots of romance, the devil or not, the hell or not. I got nightmares in my head, I fear, that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space no Fine, I woke up in a warm environment The soft cozy bed with silk sheets The soft pillow, the warm blanket, it feels ethereal I was half asleep and half awake The bright sun rays were sneaking through the side of the curtain and hitting my face the warmness and coziness is so compelling, engulfing me, but the sun rays were forcing me to open my eyes and see the beautiful day. A beautiful sunrise, but chirping, the scent of new birds, of flowers, the ever so calming and refreshing breeze of the morning. Everything out there, but the warm bed and blanket engulfing me so precisely, but then an addictive scent filled my nostrils. I turned Around to the other side, the scent was emitting and unconsciously dragged myself to the scent until I found it filling me to the brine with ecstasy. A faint place, yet soft. I caressed the softness and felt something. Chuck, tuck, tuck. I don't know, but the sound was melodic. It is an amazing feeling, and the warmth is like. It's putting me back to sleep. I scooted closer and drifted into my dreamland. I again half slept, woke up and caught the glimpse of my Greek god. He was brushing my hair and I was lying in his embrace. He's an actual Greek god. I inhaled the sweet scent and drifted back into my slumber. Jungkook, the moment I got to know that she escaped, anger rushed through me. I want to fire my guards, or maybe kill those useless pigs, for letting her escape under their nose. I saw the CCTV footage, and she's smart, I must admit. She dodged my guards, and a sense of pride rose in me. She's clearly beyond my expectations, first talking back to me, then escaping. But she doesn't know that this is a forest, this is my territory, and also surrounded by wild animals. I checked the camera was planted in the forest to where she actually was. She is impressive, but she made a huge mistake. No one can escape from me. Saman went south. It is the most dangerous area and also we don't have cameras planted there because mostly the dangerous wild animals had made the area their territory. He spoke and I grabbed my teeth. Anger rushed through my veins. I want her, but she still tried to escape. The thought, thought of her getting attacked by the wild animals shuddered me. Get your toys rolling, it's time to have some fun and mark my words, if you can't find her, you'll all see the worst of me. I walked and went to the arsenal room. I picked my best gun and so did my gods. I went out in the forest to haunt my spoiled princess. She better run for her life because once I found her, she would see the real me. I was searching along with my mom. I separated a group of sex in three different directions. I was searching since the daytime, but now the night is starting to fall and she is still nowhere to be found. I was frustrated. I stabbed the tree with my knife in frustration. I looked down and saw something shiny on the ground. I bent down and picked it up. It was an earring stud, the same diamond stud I had seen in Moyne's ear when I choked her. That means she is near. She is near. Move. I growled and my men started their job. I heard a growl. For some reason, it didn't give me a good vibe. It again growls. Means there is something or someone he is threatening. Maybe Vine? I ran to the direction of the growl and saw the tiger in front of Vine. She was backing off and the tiger jumped to attack her. But I shot it at the right time and it fell on the ground and blood trickled from its brain. I took long strides to her furiously and held her chin and shouted. Didn't I warn you? She was staring at me. I again shouted to which she started backing off. That's when I understood she was scared. I was about to hold her, but her foot came to my view. I would rather be stabbed a million times than this. Her foot was badly injured and bleeding. I tried to remove the bait, but she screamed in pain. 
I soothed her with my words and then again started opening the bait. She screamed again but I successfully removed it and she looked at me with tears streaming down her eyes. Continuously, she started breathing heavily and clenching on my sleeve. She went limp in my embrace. I took her back to the house. The doctor was already there. He treated her foot and thank God there was no fracture. The doctor stretched a wound and gave her an injection to which she will sleep through the night. She is silently sleeping like a goddess in my bed. How she drove me crazy in just one day. She is innocent but people are not. I sat next to her and caressed her hair. She drove me crazy, Monaj. I brushed the back of my fingers on her cheek. You are born to be a queen, my queen. You will rule. I sat to her sleeping figure and went to the other side and lay down after a long, hectic, but beautiful day with my beautiful queen. Next day when I woke up, she was in my arms, sleeping peacefully. I smiled to myself. I let her lay in my arms for some more time and got up because I got things to do. The king is never on rest. Vine. I woke up the next day with a headache and a stinging pain in my foot. I opened my eyes. My vision was a little blurry. I adjusted my vision and for a second I was perplexed as to where the freak was I. Then the whole thing hit me like a true rock. I sat up on the bed. I looked over to the bed and around the room but it was silent. There was no sign of the Greek god. I sighed in relief but the image of that wild thing jumping on me to attack kept on re repeating in my brain. I bent my knee to curl into a ball but my foot sent a striking pain in my body to which I winced. I looked at my foot and the image of my bloody sneaker started roaming in my head. I started shivering. My foot was bandaged. I ran my finger through my hair. I looked over but all I could see the tiger jumping on me. I screamed. Tears started falling down my pink cheeks. I closed my eyes tightly. I was sobbing, not caring about my foot, got down from the other side of the bed and as I stood up, another wave of striking pain sent on my body and I fell on my butt. I was a shuddering and crying mess. I was so vulnerable. I felt some sound, I don't know, but then a pair of warm arms around my shoulder from the side. I was shaking continuously in that person's grip. I looked over and saw a worried, unknown face. Ma'am, are you all right? She asked with a concerned tone. I was sobbing. She again hugged me and I started sobbing, wrapping my hands around her arm in front of me. She patted my back to calm me down and kept on telling me sweet for races, but I didn't hear any of them. I pulled back when I was back in my senses. It's all right. You are safe now. There's no danger. She spoke, wiping my tears, which were falling like an open tap. I started hiccups due to crying so much. She made me sit on the bed and brought water for me, which was on the other side of the bed. I was still shivering. She brought the glass in front of me and I flinched badly. It's fine. It's just water. She made me drink some water. I calmed down, but I was still taking shaky breaths in. I'm Sierra. I'm the caretaker of the house. She spoke and I nodded. Are you feeling any better? I was too traumatized to utter a, the actual words. Is your foot all right? You shouldn't be off the bed. Let me see. She spoke and put my foot on her lap. She started opening the bandage to take a look. Maybe stitches. She checked my wound and wrapped the bandage back on. It's good that stitches are fine. She spoke and looked at me. And I was still scared. She held my hand and squeezed lightly. Everything will be all right. You must be hungry. I will get you some food. She discarded her hands and I held her hand in my shaky ones, shaking my head side to side. It's all right, amigo. This place is safe. She spoke. Then I saw the man coming into the room like a king. Black shirt, front two buttons open, short kissing, his perfect and alluring toned chest. Rolled sleeves, showing the tattoo sleeve, the rings in his hands, the Rolex watch on his wrist and the perfectly crisped trousers with a belt on the waist. He came near me. He's the monster who is saving me again and again, the Greek god. Tears were streaming down as the terror was too much for me to handle. He sat next to me. I warned you, but you didn't listen. 
he spoke in his deep voice. I looked up with my tear-filled eyes. The sharp face, hooded eyes, rough, subtle, sharp jawline, the deepest brown eyes. My tear made its way down the cheek, but he wiped it with the pad of his thumb. You should listen when I tell you something. Again, that deep voice. Your foot has eight stretches, and the doctor said it will take almost two weeks to recover or maybe more. I sniffed. Stop crying, he spoke. I hung my head low. He grabbed my chin gently and made me look at him. You get on my nerves, Monange. I sniffed again. He won't let her go. She won't stay. Will the devil ruin her? Or will she melt in his fire of obsession? Will the melting bring fortune or the destruction of the world? Who will melt, devil or her? To be continued.